It was August 10th, 2018. Richard Russell, also known as Bebo, clocked into work at SeaTac Airport at 2.36 p.m. You see him here briefly showing his badge to TSA. He walks through the employee security checkpoint. He's wearing a black t-shirt that says the sky's no limit. After this moment, five hours go by, according to the FBI report. It's unclear what he was doing for this time. Around 7.15 p.m., he arrived with a tow vehicle at the cargo area at the far north end of SeaTac, known as Cargo One. Air traffic control started to sense something was not right when trying to make contact. The Dash 8 on runway 16 center, say your call sign. That's Russell on the left side of your screen in the tow vehicle. He's got complete control over the aircraft. You can see him release the plane from the vehicle, and the plane starts rolling forward. He really only has a few seconds to start running towards the door of the plane. Watch him as he opens the cabin door and jumps in. He pulls the door back up very quickly. Seattle ground, uh, horizon guy, um, about to take off, it's gonna be crazy. So that is actually new footage in this tragic case of Richard Russell, who was a ground service operator at SeaTac Airport, who um, uh, I believe it was uh, last year uh, commandeered a plane uh, out out of SeaTac and uh, crashed it um, after doing a few loops and after having a discussion that we're gonna get into with air traffic control. Um, But this is how that all went down after he did commandeer a plane. Sorry, you need to call and scramble now. Russell can be seen taking off in this new video. Several angles show the Horizon airplane leaving ground. There's an emergency situation going on, and uh, FAA Tower is not accepting any uh, aircraft right now, not letting anybody depart. While up in the air, Russell continued to radio in. Hey, uh, I found myself in a bit of a predicament. I'm in the air right now, and just kind of soaring around. At one point, he said he was going to check out Mount Rainier. Down below, all aircraft held from taking off. It's kind of freezing everybody at the moment. An hour and 13 minutes after taking off, Russell crashed the plane on a remote Pierce County island, ending one of the most serious domestic airline security breaches since 9-11. The FBI ruled his death a suicide. Madison Wade, King 5 News. So quick correction, that was actually 2018. Um, but we now see the entire lead up to what happened, how he got through. I mean, my my first question was, how did he get through? Well, he was working, he knew how to move planes around. Um, we have more information about what he was saying to air traffic controllers before he did actually crash. He was joking with them. Um, at one point, he even asked air, air traffic controllers, hey, do you think if I land successfully, Alaska will give me a job as a pilot? The air traffic controller trying to keep him on side replied, you know, I think they would give you a job doing anything if you could pull this off. To which Russell replied, yeah, right, nah, I'm a white guy. Oh, buddy, uh, I don't know about adding the fact that you're white. Anyway, there was a lot going on in Mr. Russell's brain, of course. Um, They tried to get him, obviously, to land safely. Um, This is from an air traffic controller. Okay, Rich, if you could, could you start a left-hand turn and we'll take you down to the southeast. Richard uh, Russell replied, this is probably jail time for life, huh? I would hope it's, it is for a guy like me. While still in the air, Russell is heard telling traffic controllers he's just a broken guy before telling them he is preparing for jail time for life. Uh, it's incredibly tragic. Um, and I think when people, when we first saw this video, we were like, wow, that is a one way to go out. But now we see how it actually went down. Um, David, any any thoughts on this? I mean, it seems it's it's. I mean, generally, you're just like, can we all have more mental health, mm. please? Yeah, no. I mean, look, it's so clear this guy was um, had so many mental health issues and was clearly a broken and troubled man. And it's a reminder that there are broken, troubled people in our midst who still manage to carry out their regular job, their regular duties, whether it's at an airport or any place else. Um, I'm just, you know, thank goodness this guy didn't kill anybody else. Um, that he didn't hurt any other planes on the ground. That he didn't hit hit anybody when he. You know, put it down on this island. Um, and kudos to the air traffic control for trying to coax him down, trying to guide him uh, into a safe landing. Um, so, but look, it's a remi- again, it's just a reminder. So many, I think it's something like one in five Americans have taken an antidepressant because they've been severely depressed or depressed enough they feel they need medication. Let's remember that there are a lot of people around us who may seem, you know, ordinary and fine, but are facing some incredible challenges in their life.
Absolutely, and not to mention the way we criminalize those with mental illness already and that homelessness leads to mental illness because not having a roof over your head, that, that that's a lead cause in making you go crazy. Cuz it turns out people need to live indoors. So anyway, you know, he's been memorialized as Sky King, this guy Richard, Richard Russell. And I know that that's kind of a nice way to think of it. I feel like it's a little bit disrespectful to call someone Sky King. Um, but uh, they seem to have handled it well, even though he was able to breach this. But maybe have a few more locks and checks on who can, you know, just commandeer a plane. That might be. So I'm sure SeaTac has since taken action.